I'm joined in the studio by Thomas Fureens from Football Beyond Borders and Marshall Gore, the chairman of the African Nations Cup UK. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me this evening as per. Um, so any surprises when it comes to Sepp Blatter possibly uh, making a re-election this, uh, this December? Well, you, you cannot be surprised by something by that because first he has a lot of support still from both Asians and African nations and that's how it, that's what he's going to do he's going to judge if he still has that enormous amount of support or will he need to step down because sometimes it's better to leave the game when it's still high instead of going down and lose because if he comes back and loses at the end of the year, that will be a tremendous defeat for him. Is this going to be a risk that he's willing to take? Um, I, I think it's, it's far from being a risk, so I, I think it, it just doesn't sound right um, after what has happened. Um, I just think that uh, FIFA needs a fresh start and reform sometimes works better with, um, with different personnel rather than recycling the same people. It's nothing too personal about, about him. I think, like I've said before here, that he's done some, some good things as well. So we shouldn't entirely crucify him. But I don't think a comeback at this stage is, uh, is what FIFA needs. I think FIFA needs a fresh start with fresh personnel and uh, they need to move on and rewrite another story. And I think the Blatter story has to be left behind. Now and, and well, it's going to carry on. I mean, when you're hearing stories of him, might he might stand again? I mean, why? Why? Why has this come about? I mean, FIFA have already released a statement saying that you know he stands by his resignation. But why has it come out in the first place that oh he might stand? Well, uh, before we even think about a, a, a renewal of FIFA, we need to think about who's because okay, Blatter is the head of FIFA. Then you have the head of uh, UEFA, Comebol, uh, CAF, and all of them. And you have the, the national ones. They are all the same. Most of them, besides one or two uh, exceptions, they have been in place for 10, 20 years. If it's not the same person, it's the same movement. For example, in Brazil, we've had four uh, presidents after Avalanche in 73 left. But they're all from the same movement. Mm -hmm. They're all on the same side as Blatter. So really, will change the head of FIFA, will bring any difference? I don't think so. Do you agree with him? I think I agree on the notion that um, there hasn't been much um, fresh breath of fresh air in the changes of leadership in um, uh, international uh, football organizations like CAF and CONCAF. Yes, they've been um, kind of like old furniture staying. I look for Africa, for example, Issa Hayat has been there since the 80s. But again, we need to be very careful not to, to, uh, to actually uh, kind of like uh, uh, crucify these people that longevity in office um, means unproductivity. I think we, we also have to open that although Blatter and perhaps maybe the, the likes of Ita Isahat have overstayed their office period though with a mandate but we also look at it that they've done some good things as well but I just think change of leadership sometimes is just good for a renewal or for reformation starting a new dispensation with someone new and I think FIFA needs that like we, we, we have seen in the past so but yes there is an opportunity that Let's not forget that Blatter won overwhelmingly by a majority mm. as well, you know. But to think on a personal level for him, I think personally it would be catastrophic for him if he thinks of coming back. I think to quit now is, is the best thing that has happened to him. And to some extent it will preserve some of his legacy, the good work that he has done. But if he's to bounce back again like what Thomas has said, yeah. I think it becomes muddy. Well, let's say if he does quit, who would be the perfect person to replace him? Someone with a fresh outlook. Well, to be honest, if you think about all the people that presented themselves uh, for the past election, and I'm talking from Champagne to, um, to Prince Hussein, mm -hmm. and now with the talks of maybe Platini getting involved, they're all the same. They're all, come, they're all far from the same So bag. it's doomed then, if they're all from the same? No, no you need to have someone external from the organization. Like who? Like, for example, in Brazil, we're talking about Zico maybe coming in. I don't know, maybe it could be a good option to get uh, someone, maybe Figo actually could be a good example of someone that is from outside the, the International Federation mm -hmm. and has not been yet, because it's a yet, uh, uh, I think, corrupt. I so, um, I think, well, so you never know what's going to come out in the next few weeks. I, but yes. I, think, I think I disagree sometimes, with, I disagree to some extent with, uh, with Thomas, because FIFA is a big organization. We're talking of a $6 billion um, um, 
budget here and um, to entrust it to someone who has got no administration and um, administrative experience would be very risky so uh, I prefer that someone comes in who's got a very good healthy uh, background of football administration it would be good in that way yes but although from football perspective you want to see uh, a Luis Figo or a Zico mm -hmm. someone who played but good footballers do not always turn out to be good administrators okay gentlemen I know we could talk about this all night but thank you very much for joining me